So today we will be foregoing the pointless interlude of sports and news portions of the podcast in favor of the main event, which is... Well, obviously, we're going through Jim Jarmusch's filmography. I thought I thought we were going to be talking about Avengers Endgame. Oh, well, I, I, I was prepared for Jim Jarmusch. But you know what? That's a good idea. Why not? Well, I heard it's doing relatively well and, as of this podcast. And we both saw it. Yeah. Okay, good. Very good. Saw it twice. I, I saw it once. Nope. I saw it once in not so great seats, but I, I saw enough of it. Okay. Saw enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yes, we're obviously going to talk the movie. We're going to do our non-spoilers, spoilers, and then we're just going to talk about really the history of the MCU and then how the MCU is going to move forward in the future. Sounds good. You want to get into it? All right, let's get right to it. So, starting with non-spoilers, uh, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Movie starts a little slow. Mm-hmm. And it it's not s- so slow that, you know, I'm bored to death, but I'm just, there's so much to anticipate that you're just kind of chomping at the bit for it to get going. Yeah. And it's very, uh, I guess you'd say character heavy scenes to start off without yes. giving away too much. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I think I, I it's hard to do this without spoiling things. And, you know, oh, wow, if you're playing bingo at home, I wonder how many fucking reviews of this you've listened to where people haven't said that. Right. But, uh, no, I I think it's hard to talk about this because I, I do think parts of the beginning are slow. But there are other parts in the beginning where they throw things at you that I was honestly not expecting. And I was like, oh, we're doing this? Mm-hmm. Okay, weird. Or like, oh, we're you're, we're going that route. Okay, interesting. And I feel like that was enough for me to get through the slow parts because it was like, okay, I didn't expect that. I, right. I, this is not what I anticipated. Um, but I definitely agree. In terms of pacing, it's the, it, it's slower and definitely in terms of the rest of the movie. It, it's things do ramp up quite a bit. Right. Well, it's it's also interesting. I, I don't. I'm not sure this is what you meant by when you said, "Oh, we're doing this," but. Honestly, from the first shot, which I won't say what it is, the cinematography looks way better than most Marvel movies. Yeah, that's something I've noticed with a lot of just the, the Russo brother movies in general. But this movie in particular, I don't mm-hmm. know who the cinematographer is, but... That, every, would, that would be a one Trent Opalock or Opalock, I don't even pronounce it. Everything just looked a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that Marvel has bad cinematography, I, I would say most Marvel movies have what I guess I would call competent cinematography. Right. Because there's that sort of standard, uh, I guess, TV-ish look. Mm-hmm. But then there's wh- what you would say is more artful cinematography. And I definitely got a, an artful vibe out of a lot of the shots, particularly at the very first scene. Oh, yeah. The scene's very good, and I do agree. I think the cinematography was... There's a lot of really sharp color work in this, especially right. I was, with the yeah. cosmic stuff. I was going to say, you know how a lot of time with blockbusters, they sort of gravitate towards a couple color palettes? Mm-hmm. Like, I was hearing someone say, oftentimes it's orange and blue. Yeah. You get really everything here. Mm-hmm. You get a lot some, of green, there's some blue and purples, and reds and such a lot, right. of, a lot you, of stuff you, you get everything pretty much mm-hmm. uh unfortunately not everyone gets a uh, long enough time to shine mm-hmm. but that kind of seems like a seemingly impossible task yes but part of me when i was watching the movie or after the movie was complete and i thought about that i said but you had three hours how the hell much time do you need yeah there's uh and, and that kind of i went back to the beginning i thought well you could have Trimmed up a couple things in the beginning. Not that, because mm-hmm. as you said, the beginning scenes are good and they're interesting enough, but I don't think that all of them needed to be as long as they were. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. There needed to be some some trimming of certain elements. But I also agree with you in that uh, there were a couple characters that I, I straight up didn't see, like that are, that are kind of led to. The, the the you know it's led to believe that you will see them but you don't really and I'm like where did that person where are they okay. at okay yeah we we don't want to give that away but no but what I will say is the characters I wanted to see the most development from I got right and you know that's that's important okay yeah I would agree with that for sure uh, let's talk some tone what do you think of the tone 
you know, I heard from some people that it wasn't working for them in ways because the beginning it's like there's a little too jokey for considering the events of the last movie. It's like why are we all why are we making jokes about some of the shit, guys? Like, <laughs> but for me, I. Yeah, I, it, I, you know, this isn't. It's not like fucking uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, where I'm, I'm literally losing the director. Like, am I supposed to be laughing at this? What's no, going I, on? No, yeah. At the very least, you could tell what was supposed to be comedic and what was supposed to be serious. Yes, and that was one thing I thought that this movie did pretty well in general. Mm-hmm. I thought the tone was, for the most part, pretty balanced. Yeah, and I, yeah. Of course, there's always a couple parts where did we need levity in this part? But I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to make the best of a shitty situation. They're picking mm-hmm. up the pieces of the last movie where Thanos obviously won. Mm-hmm. It was the Empire Strikes Back, if you will. Oh, yeah. and Of the Avengers, at least. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, uh, in my opinion, I thought they handled it pretty well. There's a lot of really funny jokes in this. And I, was, I, I think it's the most, I think it's the funniest Marvel movie since Thor Ragnarok. Now, that being said... There are a couple of groaners. There are always going to be. Groaners I mean, there, in there's always a couple, but mm-hmm. at the very least, because uh, unlike the Infinity War, none of them overstayed. If they were bad, it's just you know, huh? Or okay. you know, it was like meh. That was it. They didn't just keep going and beat it. You know, beat a dead horse. You know. I thought there was one joke where they did that, and I think you'll. It's similar to the one that they that did it in Infinity War. Oh, it involved the exact same characters. Oh, I disagree. I like that one. That one, I was just like, okay, we get it. Cut, please cut. Like, I no, okay, <laughs> it went a little long, but I thought it at least started funny. As oh well. yeah, but it's like God it's, damn it's it. better. Damn it, it's it's better, but it's <laughs> okay, the we'll, same. We'll get there at spoilers. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, well, I you know because it was one of those things where I said not everyone got their time to shine. In some ways, I felt like this. Kind of didn't meet expectations all the way, mm-hmm. but that's also because expectations <clears throat> for this, for me, I was expecting, like, uh, this is so ridiculous and it's almost unfair, mm-hmm. but it's almost not because it's uh, the culmination of 22 movies, or rather 21, this being the 22nd. Mm-hmm. I had basically expectations for this to be as good as Dark Knight or something. Ceiling level. Not yeah. Basically, it, I was expecting this to be in top three superheroes. I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that's through the roof, but it, I mean, how the hell could I not? Because mm-hmm. there, there's a lot to promise, and I think for the most part, it delivers. I think, in my opinion, it it for for me, it absolutely did. I I loved this. I I loved it almost entirely. Almost entirely. It's not in my top three favorite Marvel movies. No. But, in my opinion, it's better than Infinity War, I think. I think it's a better over movie overall than Infinity War, because Infinity War is, for me, it just it lacks several critical elements, namely a falling action of its very, very big conclusion. But this has everything I kind of wanted a Marvel movie to be. Like, it has a lot of... Has a lot like even the elements that weren't that good were there. Like there, there wasn't anything like super missing. Well, there are things that are missing, but we'll get to that later. But I was, I was really, really enthralled by this, and part of that, I think, I, I agree with you, does come from expectation. I wasn't looking forward to this as much as you were. I, I know for a fact because I didn't like Infinity War as much as you did. I was a little yeah. disappointed by it, but I still like that movie. I stand by my score of eight out of ten, and I'll get to my score later for this. But I did like it more. Okay, see, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm sort of on the fence with how I feel about this one in terms of, do I like it better than Infinity War? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say Infinity War is close in any event. This might be a, well, fuck it. I think I know, we all know the main reason why this might be better. I think it's just, I, I can't. Certain things that happen? Well, there's a certain big thing that happens, yes. Well, there's there's one, and then I would just say, emotionally speaking, like, yeah, like, Infinity War was like, it's sad, but, like, this is like, I felt a lot more, and the, the emotions in this weren't as cheaply laid, yeah. on, laid on. Like, Infinity War is like, oh, no, Spider-Man. Oh, my God, these characters. It's like, I no, I'm not buying it. Yeah. Whereas things happen in this where I'm like, oh, okay. This is the, this is it. Like this yeah. is what's happening, and that was something I also really enjoyed. Is like 
do you while watching this like it felt there were certain scenes where it felt like be, like like beating like an, a, a a final boss in a game like I was stressed out actually stressed out watching parts of this movie <laughs> I was like okay like what's gonna happen because this is kind of freaking me out a little bit <laughs> Certain parts. No, I definitely got that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what that's actually kind of related to what you were just saying. I think the emotions didn't feel cheap. I think the performances all around were really good. Oh, that's that's for sure. Standouts for me, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. All of the OG Avengers kills it. Yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, finally getting Jeremy Renner getting some goddamn material to work with. I was gonna say, <laughs> you know. It, for people who felt, you know, let down by his role in the very first Avengers mm-hmm. and even thought maybe you wanted even more out of two and three or whatever, or, well, he wasn't in, uh, wasn't Infinity in Infinity War. War yeah. yeah. So here, here's his time to shine yeah. for absolute sure. Oh yeah. So that's pretty much that, I guess, with non-spoilers. The point is, I think we'll just overall it. I think it's relatively around the same you know what I'd say slightly better mm-hmm. than Infinity War. I agree I but actually agree with you. There I think too. the monumental, impossibly high expectations, uh they weren't met, but again that I realized they were kind of ridiculous to begin with. Oh yeah. So do we want to move on to spoilers? Yes. Alright, so I'm gonna start with my first big fucking problem with this movie. I think I know what it is. Is oh, hey, ha- Black Widow fans. Yeah. They uh, did our girl do- dirty. <laughs> uh, okay. The, seriously. So we got uh, a letter from uh, the writers. Dear Black Widow fans, eat shit sucks to suck. As I said to Abby after this, uh, this town ain't big enough for two females, uh, strong female characters. We got to get rid of one. <laughs> and you know what? It kind of, it. The, I completely agree with you in that it supremely pissed me off in a way because I'm like, well, you just you just truncated my my excitement for the Black Widow movie by eighty five percent. Right, because so I'm now, like, this is like the Han Solo prequel. Now it's like I don't fucking care. Yeah, I already know what happens. <laughs> like, God damn it, this is oh man, because it's I'm assuming the Black Widow solo movie is going to be a prequel. Well, I Has mean, to be. It, it seems that way. Yeah, but then again, the the they're playing fast and loose with the time rules. Yeah, and that's another thing. And I'll get to that in a fucking moment. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've got a whole subsection of the spoilers ready for just that, but we're yeah. not there yet. But you're right. that When I saw that, I said, well, now, because there's kind of rumors going back and forth. Is it a prequel, isn't it? Now we pretty much, it's confirmed. We pretty much know that now. I'd be stunned if it was anything other than a prequel. I would love to be wrong. Mm-hmm. I would love to be wrong, but I can't help but get the feeling that we're not. Mm-hmm. But then again, what's her name? Scarlet Witch said that weird shit to Hawkeye. I wish they could be here and like know what we did. And she s- says something along the lines of, oh, they know. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. referring to her and Vision, who was nowhere to be seen in this entire movie. Yeah, Vision died. Yeah. But, he didn't get but, snapped. But, but black, back to Black Widow, I felt like it was, first of all, she was in literally zero fight scenes, mm-hmm. unless you count the mountaintop wrestling match. No, I'm going to Su- jump off. Suicide race yeah. I, is what I call it. Yeah, the the... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I felt like it was, uh, you know, her her sacrifice was hardly her moment to shine. Well, that was yeah. another weird thing about that scene in general is that, and someone actually brought this up. Oh, she makes the heroic sacrifice, but she wasn't in, she wasn't in the final battle. I felt like mm. if there's one thing that needed to happen, you know, because some people might say, oh, that's too predictable, M- motherfucker. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. It's a mm-hmm. superhero movie. The one thing I thought for sure we're getting is some callback. Where the the OG six and then the new people all come together mm-hmm. and just tear shit up, and we do. But but sans, she's not there. Sans Nat. It, it, the thing is, it felt it just felt wrong mm-hmm. her not being there, and that yeah. it just felt way off. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I I almost feel like they should have had them say some shit, you know, before before they're arguing with each other to jump off. Natasha, no. What about your solo movie? <laughs> like she's just like jumping. She's like. It's just a prequel. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, and and then she's like, besides, Clint, you have a Disney Plus series coming. How will you help establish dominance in this new age of streaming services without your show? <laughs> Splat. 
Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing that people are saying about that scene that I, I actually I will echo is like I thought you had to kill I thought you had to kill whatever you loved. No, you not, just had to sacrifice. So you have to sacrifice whatever you love. Well, you, you don't you, commit suicide. Well, Jesus Christ, semantics, my friend. Well, no, that's not semantics. Like the first in Infinity War, it's like fucking Thanos grabbed Gamora by like borderline the hair and yeah. threw her off of the goddamn yeah. cliff. This one's like, no, I'm going to kill myself. No, I'm going <laughs> to kill myself. It's like, wait a second. This isn't how this works. Do you love yourself? Are I don't you both know. self? Like, again, that's like thinking about it. It's like, doesn't ruin them. Like, no, the movie sucks now. No, no, it's like, I, I no, but saying. it's like it's watching that scene again, I'll be like, wait a minute. Okay, so <laughs> while on the subject of that, did you think for a second when they hold hands, they give each other that awkward look like they're just going to throw down? <laughs> no. I, I, thought for, I don't know why, because like, that's so obvious that wasn't going to be the case. Yeah, yeah. But a part of me is like, are they that selfish? They're just going <laughs> to fight to the death? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> it's like the end of Double Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> like... That would have been horrible writing wise, <laughs> but I would have laughed my ass off and loved that in the Mortal Kombat Annihilation way. Yeah. <laughs> which, which obviously has no place in this because people actually like this movie unironically. Mm-hmm. And there's some other issues here in that it's like, Nebula, what the fuck? You yeah. didn't tell them about this? You know how fucking Vormir works. There's a lot of shit that Nebula... Nebula, what the fuck? You didn't tell that, oh, by the way, I'm going to be on the same planet where Peter Quill is and all this bullshit. It's like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> you're leaving out a lot before we make this jump, in through, jump through fucking time and space. Couldn't they just throw her down? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't really, like... I'm just complete. Uh, let me put it this way. I'm completely neutral about Nebula, mm-hmm. where Black Widow is one of my favorite characters. Yeah. I so, actually thought I, I liked the character a lot more in this because yeah. like, she's a lot more to do. Right. But they fuck her character up a little bit with plot holes. I'm like, come on, man. She kind of does a lot. And I like Karen Gillan a lot. She's really cool. And No, definitely. I'm she's just, coming I'm just to the saying, role well, yeah. It, I'm just saying, if we had to kill a character, if it was up to me, you know, you mm-hmm. had to choose. Yeah. Eh, I'm going to go with right. Nebula. Or Nebula, yeah, yeah. Or or Hawkeye for. I mean, eh. as much as I love Jeremy Renner, it's like I just saw him cut some dudes up with samurai swords. Like that's all I wanted. Like I just wanted to see him kill people, like a lot of people, and like yeah. be really badass. Well, see, that was another thing. I thought I would have liked to see a little more Ronan. Yeah, because I okay, I thought for instance, if uh, if you were talking about scenes to trade time for, mm-hmm. since the because the first. You know, the picking up the pieces shit. That's like almost a third of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then they just curb stomp Thanos, which I thought was weird, weird as fuck. But I we'll, love we'll, that. <laughs> we'll get there in a second. But before they do that, you know, I thought they could have cut out, maybe made some of the Iron Man stuff a little shorter. Mm-hmm. If that meant just a, a, just one more scene of Jeremy Renner just killing whoever the fuck the, you know, the Ronin or, yeah. or the, sorry, the Yakuza or whatever yeah. the hell. Because mm-hmm. that scene was awesome. It's just a little short. Yeah. That's all. I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you want to talk about the Thanos, th- the thing at the beginning. Well, this is what I meant in this non-spoiler section of just, like, surprises after yeah. surprises. So we get to Thanos' planet, and they just kill him. like Straight th- up. Yeah, and, like, you know, once they realize, of course, that he's snapped the in- Infinity Stones out of existence. And, th- and oh, man, Thor, like the G that he is, cuts his head off with Stormbreaker, and they're like, what the fuck? And he's like... I went for the head. And I was the only person in my theater. I laughed like a fucking idiot. Oh. I was like, ha! I was like, that's a great line. Like, that. that's a callback. Right. Anybody else? Like, huh? you don't fucking huh? remember that? <laughs> remember when he said that shit? And then we, like, get the title sequence and shit. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And then five years later happens. And yeah. I'm like, what are we doing here? I'm like, okay, this is a huge problem I had with Fantastic Four. Tread carefully. Oh, yeah. Like the one year late, wherever the fuck Except they did it earlier, which is a more opportune moment. Yes. Whereas Fantastic Four did it in the middle of the movie, and the movie already sucked that far in. And it's a culture shock. Like, Thor is out of shape. Yeah, I was going to get... You want to talk about Fat Thor? Fat Thor. Let's talk about Fat Thor. I kind of felt like it was a cheap gag that mm-hmm. they just kind of like ran too much with. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's funny, but... It just felt weird that, like, this is him for the rest of the movie. 
there are two major changes that they show us, and both of them, uh, I'm I was immediately like I don't like this at all, and then I ended up being okay with. How was it that? was Fat Thor and the Hulk. Like both, I'm like I don't like this. Oh, Professor Hulk. Yeah, I'm like I don't know if I like that they're doing this in this movie. And then like, by the end of the movie, I was like, all right, that's fine. I mean, it's not my favorite, and it kind of did diminish a bit of what I like. Like coming off of Thor Ragnarok and Infinity War, like Thor is fucking. One of the my favorite MCU characters. When and he started, kind of in the like middle bo- bottom, lower, or, yeah. yeah, bottom of the pack, middle of the pack for me, yeah. And now they put him in this place where it's just like he's not super likable. I mean, he's he's human being, you know. Like he has panic attacks, and he's like you know hedonistic, and he's got vices, and he's scared. But it it put him in a place where it's like we were riding so high. Yeah. Uh, even up until the first few minutes, like when he kills Thanos, I'm like, oh man, this is the okay, Thor so I thought he, we yeah, get. So he's still Thor, but then he's almost, he's almost, well, shadow of his former self. Yeah. But I will say they develop him in a way throughout the film that, again, by the end, by where they take Thor, literally and figuratively, I was fine with it. I was pretty fine with it. Yeah. I would say So he's the not the best part. character in the movie. There was also a really awkward line. Like, this is a joke that didn't work for me. Hmm. It's like, I'm going to rip your arms and shove them up your butt. The fact they chose butt felt so unnatural. It's just like, just say ass. Yeah. It, it, you know what it felt like? De- Disney was just dipping their toe in the PG pool. Yeah, yeah. D- did you get that impression a couple times throughout this movie? Especially. You know where else I got that? What's that? You know? All right. So this movie isn't just about fisty cuffs, lasers, and cutting heads off. Let's do a heist part, mm-hmm. which it wasn't bad, but it just felt very, uh, very much like a regular, just just a movie, mm-hmm. which isn't a bad thing. But they're again shying away from my favorite thing, pugilism. Yeah, yeah. It just felt like how can we dip our toe in the PG pool? Yeah, and just like especially in that same scene, we get yeah. somebody says the word dick, right? Where in that isn't a uh, Korg? Are you talking about that scene? Is yeah, that says it. Well, I guess Fortnite. Yeah, that's Jesus what Christ. I mean. It's like, oh well, he. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, okay, so you are using edgy language, and then you say, you know, he says, "Oh, he's being a dickhead." Yeah, you know, this guy called me a dickhead, <laughs> <laughs> and then he just gives him that PG insult back. I am Thor. Yeah, but yeah, that, and then I guess we'll talk Professor Hulk. Okay, so Professor Hulk, I was always a fan of the comics, being mm-hmm. a, 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 you know, shameless. 90s comics fan. Mm-hmm. I I mean, I guess obviously Hulk as a story, you know, as a plot device or just as a character works better when they're kind of two separate entities. Yeah, but it makes sense, you know. You know, five years later, fuck it, I'm just done with this. Yeah, especially since since uh, the first Avengers, we know that he can control it if he really wants to. Mm-hmm. It was a weird fucking scene, like. In my theater, like there was murmurs. There was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, and it and it's it is a very weird scene, and it's like a bit of a culture shock, and it's a bit jarring. But again, by the end of the movie, after hearing them out, I'm like, "I'm fine yeah. with this." What do you think of the selfie thing? Selfie thing was weird. The dab thing, I'm like, Shut. no, the the dab thing. I said I'm that like, it was they, too, they killed it there. It was two hello fellow or greetings fellow kids. Like, yeah, get the, the fuck. That's out why I was, it was fine. And then they said dab, and I said, all right, you overstayed your welcome. Get out. But I will say, say get out. <laughs> <laughs> Props to Marvel though for shrouding these two major character changes in absolute secrecy, and like. I had no I, yeah. fucking clue. Well, I didn't watch any of the trailers, so I knew nothing. I see. I saw most of the marketing material, and none of that is even remotely alluded to. Now okay. they've since gone back on that, and I think they're just showing full blown trailers, right. uh, scenes from the third act now. But yeah, that's a week out. Okay. So, do we want to just quickly talk about some of the scenes during the time heist? Now we're not talking about the time travel rules. But we'll get. I, I have a whole tirade set aside for that. Well. So, uh, Scott Lang comes back, right? Thanks to a rat, the MVP of the movie, arguably. That's what's so crazy. I said, <laughs> I thought to myself, "Is that really how it's done?" And then I thought, if I were writing a clickbait article, why that rat is the real hero of the Avengers? Is the rat a scrawl? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> that's oh, another no. thing. It's like, what the fuck, you guys? You know, you bring scar- uh, sorry, scrawls into the universe. Mm-hmm. That's not going to come into play you're anywhere. A- you're asking for it. <laughs> No, I mean, you're not going to have them anywhere in this movie. 
That, well, that's a that, whole other yeah, element. Whatever. That's another whole... I'll just let that bygone be bygone for now. But mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, Scott Lang's back. But the second they decide, all right, we're going to do this thing, I felt like, now we've got a movie. Mm-hmm. Not that I... Again, I didn't hate the beginning. I was just like, God damn it, just get to the fucking... You know, I'm just like, get to this, the, the, the meat, get to the, the real shit. He goes to visit his daughter, who's yeah. like 35 years older now. <laughs> no, she's, well, she, she looked, she was like six. She looked like she was 16. I don't know or about like, that. She looked like 25. Whatever. She's a teenager. She was like 10 in, in, in Ant-Man of the Wasp. <laughs> exactly. She's a teenager now. Ah, it just looked weird. I'm like, that looks like a 25 year old woman. But anyway, it's, it was neither here nor there. All right. Uh, well, okay. Next. He goes back to the Avengers headquarters and they meet up with Steve Rogers and Natasha. Right. And he's like, dude, I think there might be a way to fuck with time because I was in the quantum realm yeah. for five hours or five years and it only felt like five minutes. So let's go talk to Tony about this. And then Tony just comes speeding up in the car. Loved it. Loved it. He's like, let's fucking do this. They have their first like non-pissed yeah. off heart to heart, him and yeah. him and Cap. It's great. All right. Just to circle back mm-hmm. uh, to some of the things we were talking about earlier, the cinematography that I was talking about, that very first shot. Oh just yeah, him uh, Hawkeye practicing archery with his daughter. Mm-hmm. Just something about that just looked very good. Mm-hmm. Real Perfect good lighting, scene. composition, all that good shit. <laughs> uh, and then also, I loved the Iron Man pissed off reunion. Oh yeah, where he's like all like emaciated and yeah, he's, he's dying. Like, and yeah, like, oh, like God, we needed you or whatever the fuck, and we fucked up. Was just say he's like I thought you were a builder bear there for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Yeah, so well, Iron Man's got a kid right. in now and shit. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and some of that shit, I'm like, all right, I get it. Let's mm-hmm. let's less yakking, more whacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> let's get to the as I am already said a hundred times. Get to the pugilism, please, yeah. <laughs> please. Uh, so then, circling back, uh, they pledge what. What? What do they pledge to do with this newfound time machine that they've created? They want to go back in oh, time. Oh, take take the stones or whatever, yeah. and then resnap. Yes, resnap, and then put them back in place yeah. where and they once were. Along the lines, there's a cap versus cap fight. <sighs> now, that was another time where everything just worked so well because it was a combination of storytelling, cinematography, and choreography all coming together perfectly. Mm-hmm. Hello, Loki. Yeah. You oh, know? my God. And then he's just, die, you know, fake Captain America. And then he says, I can do this all that. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> How that one great got, was that? That got one of the best fucking laughs in the theater. Like, right. yeah, I know. I'm like, he's so fucking done. <laughs> yeah, he's just done with it. But you know what else is so funny about that? Uh-huh. It, it you know, he's just like, Jesus, was I really like that? You know, <laughs> looking at yourself in hindsight, like, <sighs> imagine, you know, instead of looking at an old photo or an old, old video, you're face to face with yourself. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me so much of uh, Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story 2. Yeah, like, yeah. God, was I really like this? <laughs> <laughs> that that was a fantastic scene. That was one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, because everything, it just, it was a perfect marriage of everything coming together. I'm like, I just felt like, now this is a goddamn movie. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That's the feeling I got when I was watching that. Mm-hmm. That whole sequence, I thought, was, well, the sequence where they're in uh, 2012 Avengers. Oh, like, right. That was real fun. Well, the other thing about that, though, because there was a cap versus cap, I thought we were going to get some more doppelgangers versus doppelgangers. Mm-hmm. Some Iron Man and Iron Man, Hulk and Hulk. Or something. That was the one thing that I thought was kind of weird about the going back to New York. I thought they were going to get in the mix again, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I realized that'd be kind of a detour. Yeah. But it, that that's what I mean. It's like it was sort of weird playing with expectations of what you're given and what happens. Yeah, for sure. So then... The Hulk thing with... Uh, Ancient One. I love that she's like, you're five years too early. Yeah, that's That's, that's, that's so great. perfect. She mm-hmm. she just she just somehow knows. Yeah, he's performing surgery down the street. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty nifty. Mm-hmm. Also, the elevator thing. Yeah. Motherfuckers, come on. You, you, can't, you can't do a callback like that just to not fight. Mm-hmm. I, thought, I thought for sure he's going to say... Well, before we want to get, get off. Yeah, before we get started... 
but no. I mean, he it, does say he does say see, Hail that's Hydra. The thing. Yeah, see, and that's ge- not only is it genius screenwriting, but it's a fucking it's a, a nod to a very recent event in fucking comics. The whole Cap saying Hail oh, Hydra oh. and him being a sleeper agent or whatever, like pretending or whatever the fuck well, it but ended up. That being. was a bunch of bullshit. We're, we're, we're talking about the movies, but still, it's like there's so many <laughs> I things. Mean, no, I'm, like, oh I, shit! I'm kidding. No, yeah, I thought they that, did that. They did it. <laughs> that that did cross my mind. It's like Hail Hydra. Oh, it, yeah, I was like, what's that? Was that Secret Empire? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't a fan of that. No, it wasn't good. You're like, the you movie know, did it better. Yeah, yeah. You know what? There we go. The movie did it better. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I thought, yeah, I would agree that was a clever way. It, if there is ever a way to avoid uh, my favorite thing in the world in, in film, fisticuffs, mm-hmm. that was a way to do it. Yeah. That was clever, and it fit the story. That was the other thing. I was thinking, I wish they'd mixed it up with wherever they went in the timeline, mm-hmm. but I thought it wouldn't really make sense because the main point is to just... Get the stones, get the hell out of there. They played with dramatic irony yeah. well too, because right. like the whole line with uh, Cap with himself, where he's like, "Bucky's alive," and he's yeah. like, "What?" And he just gets the drop on him. Right, it's great. I like playing with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I love. Well, just go back to Hawkeye. I love that he's basically a Punisher, mm-hmm. but used to be an Avenger. That's the difference. He's because Punisher so far. was a soldier. Then his family gets killed, and then he's pissed. Mm-hmm. This is. You thought you got all the way to the top and then fell all the way to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Not that Frank was like, my family sucked anyway, but, <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no Netflix characters in this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm like, when when the thing happens, I was like, where's, where's Jessica Jones? <laughs> well, uh, personally, I gave no shits at all. Neither did I. I didn't even think about it. Till the very end of the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, they weren't there. Oh, well. <laughs> well they don't even have shows anymore, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. So do we want to get to the, the side tirade? Yeah, side tirade one? is that is, There's two, right? Well, one's more like a gush fest. This okay. Is, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do the one. next. Yeah, side tirade <laughs> slash rant number one. Yes. Time travel, interdimensional travel. Mm-hmm. I've, I've one word. <laughs> God damn it. Mm-hmm. Do I hate time travel mm-hmm. in movies? There, there, I can name about four movies where I like it. Mm-hmm. Timeline, Ninja Turtles 3, but that's a terrible movie, but that's not the point. Mm-hmm. But I like it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Days of Future Past, Terminator 2. Actually, make that five. Let's include Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Because there's two types of time travel in my mind. There's the kind where, gee, that was a neat adventure. Nothing changed. Fuck it. Who cares? We're not going to go into the science. We're not going to question it. Neither is the audience because we're not going to mention it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, but you can't do this, this, and this, and that's that. Mm -hmm. So like Terminator, you can't, like, what the fuck is it? Go back to the future or whatever. Yeah, something. There's rules. I don't remember. There's the, The rules are much... They're much more cut and dry, and they don't try to involve real science. Because mm. when you involve real science, now you're going to confuse the shit out of me. Yeah, because science I, wins all I, the time. Well, because I'm dumb. But all yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. One, I'm, I'm a dumb dumb, so you're going to confuse me. Then when I then when I realize that the real science makes it bullshit, you're just making me question it more and more and more. It's just a rabbit hole. Yeah, I read this thing and it was talking about real quantum theory. Mm-hmm. And they basically said, well, everything checks out except for Captain America. And I said, that's exactly what I fucking thought. Yeah. It's okay. There's that whole thing about, oh, well, it, you can't have the branches. That's what the ancient one said. Mm-hmm. But if you keep the stones, that's like your thing. And as long as you put them back, right. is what she said. And it's like, time is your perspective. So it's like, Tony really did meet his dad. Mm hmm. Or Thor really did talk to his mom. Hulk really did talk to the ancient one. But also the shit in the future happens. A little confusing, but I'll roll with it. You lose me at Captain America did go back in time and fight himself. And he didn't go under the ice, but he also did. That doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Yeah, the way I saw it was like, okay, so there's literally Steve, a Steve Rogers still frozen under the ice somewhere is what's going on. I think, but not really. 
It's it does it, there if yeah this is one of those movies where the more you think about it the more it doesn't make sense. I think the but fact it, but that, it was it was ripe with doesn't make sense because mm-hmm. it wasn't like because w- what I think is if you don't think about a plot hole to a way later mm-hmm. for example since I love martial arts movies and you know sometimes they are, take place in realistic settings mm-hmm. and I, I'll sometimes think an hour later or not an hour later like a week later. You know, if one guy had a gun, that that would have changed everything. Yeah. No, but but that's different than this, where I said, credits are rolling. Oh, that was an amazing experience. But this doesn't make sense. Immediately, immediately I pointed out that that, or that was in my head. I'm like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. How? And, and then, it, it doesn't make sense within yeah. the context of itself. Because that, right. that was one thing I, I immediately questioned <laughs> was, the whole time comp compounding thing with with Ant Man in the quantum realm was like, well, I felt like I was in there for five minutes. It's like you, it's been five years. I'm like, wait a fucking minute. He's gone in the quantum realm before, and so have other people. But the time hasn't worked similarly there. Like in Ant Man one, he goes into the quantum realm and gets out, and it's the same day. It's this five minutes later in actual time. And like Michelle Pfeiffer's character. Uh, is it Hope Van Dyne or Jan- Janet Van Dyne? Janet Van Dyne. She is old. Like, she yeah, comes out. I, it's that's like, a, been, like, 40 years, and she has age. Like, it hasn't been 40 minutes. Like, she's an older woman. So, like, what What the fuck? Like, <laughs> what is that then? That's weird. That's what I'm saying. And then it's like, so, uh, you know, the, the, the main question is, so, First Avenger didn't happen, or it didn't happen the same way. Mm-hmm. Winter Soldier didn't happen. Civil War didn't happen. Like, how the fuck does that make any sense? Do all the other people have doppelgangers? What the hell is going on here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, it's one of those movies where the more you think about the time shit, it's just gonna gonna fry your brain. Well, yeah, but back to the time stuff, I guess. Small side note. Mm -hmm. I really liked the conversation between Tony and his dad. Oh, yeah, it was great. Very, very touching. Very nice. Yeah, that's a good scene. But back to talking shit about time travel and how it sucks ass. It yeah. makes no sense. Fuck time travel. <laughs> also, you know what th- thought occurred to me? Really? You're ripping a page out of the latest X-Men movies playbook? Mm-hmm. Because now, I feel like this has changed the 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 MCU, but I don't know if it's going to be for the better. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we can just go back in time and get... 2014 Gamora. Yeah. Like, how the hell is that going to work? Also, the whole so, thing... So is she just going to replace old Gamora? Also, gee, I was under the impression that soul for a soul can't go back. Mm-hmm. Or, or it's like permanent no matter what. The Vormir thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, but that was before she was thrown in the pit. All right, now you've lost again. You've lost me. And I try not to think about it, but they spent... The reason why you don't earn the it's a movie luxury, you spent too much time talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like if you watch a fucking Jet Li movie and, and they're like, well, if I just use this uh, trifisolate like fake science powder, I can bounce off walls. And you're like, <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> they just do it. He's just like, boom, 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 bounces off the walls. That's it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. This there, like, let's, uh, let's explain how we're going to do all this crazy shit for a long time. Mobius strip all this other bullshit. It's interesting you bring this up because they actually did this in a Jet Li movie. Remember the one? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> interesting you bring up Jet Li. But no, I get what you mean. That was rated PG-13. And PG-13 Jet Li movies, for the exception of Fearless, generally suck. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Off topic. Back to the movie event of the century, practically. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's just like... Ugh. It complicates a lot. And furthermore, grr, yeah. <laughs> grr, ug, herm. Yeah, yeah. Grr, ug, herm, general noises of disdain slash WTF. You know what's weird is like I knew – I actually went into this knowing – all I knew is that time travel was going to be a part of it because I saw set photos. And I – my damn ticket taker at the theater I go to in Crystal Lake said said to me, he's like, I think what they're going to do is they're going to send – is." He didn't say the exact way it happened in the movie, but he's like, they're probably going to send Tony back, or they're going to send Steve back to his time so he can live in his time. And I'm yeah. like, that would be pretty cool if they did that. That would be a good way to send off Cap. And it was I'm a like, nice send off, but it's, it doesn't make fucking sense at all. You know why it doesn't make sense? Well, I think I just explained it for Well, no, but like, here's, here's <laughs> one. He has to put all the, the Infinity Stones back, right? Right. 
How the fuck did he get to Voromir to put the Infinity Stone back? And how did he put it back there? No, because Gibbsy's back season uh, with the, the, was it the Soul Stone? Yeah. I don't think you have to kill someone and give it back. Did he just give it to Red Skull and was like, hey, after I kill you and you go to that shitty dark planet, just yeah. put this back? <laughs> that would so, have been a great like mid credit scene. Wow, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it, it it's weird and it's it does if I'm also, thinking of the movie, oh. it's not the best part of the movie. Okay, but here's another thing while we're just on this tirade. Mm-hmm. Um so okay, if you know, he puts the stones back so what? They can repeat history again? Yeah. And also, not only that, if Gamora could be brought back, and all these other people could be brought back or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, why can't Thanos come back and just rinse, lather, repeat, do the same shit over again? And then we're stuck in a time loop? Mm-hmm. Whoa, bro. Crossover with Happy Death Day. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. No. that. Oh, yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I feel like they needed, since they have him now, they should have just had Deadpool be like... Yeah, things are just weird now. Um, we're just gonna make our own rules. See ya. Just walks yeah. off screen. Yeah, I mean that would that would kind of put a, a nice little bow on it. But <laughs> they kind of have to wait now, I guess. Allegedly. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So let let's get to the ending in general. Mm-hmm. So Iron Man dies. Yeah, that this is he's actually dead. He's actually dead. And it, I mean. It's the they, end of an era. They had to have him do the snap. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know you know what's so great about that, too, is, you know, go back to Avengers 1. Mm-hmm. You know, big man with suit of armor, take that off, what are you? Mm. Now we have our answer. Yeah. It's not billionaire, philanthropist, playboy, whatever. It's a hero. Yeah. So Tony completes his arc, and that was fantastic. That's, you know what's weird is, like, this movie... To quote, to quote William Goldman, uh, endings are all about giving the audience what they want, but not in the way that they expect. So I kind of figured this was going to happen. I actually said as soon as they announced uh, that this was going to be a two-part event back in 2013, I think it was. And it's, well, yeah. it's not a two-part event, actually. It's like, yeah. Fuck <laughs> Whatever. This. Same but, shit. Uh, as soon as they said, like, Avengers uh, Infinity War Part 1, Part 2, I'm like, okay, so yeah. Infinity War Part 1 is probably going to end with, like, a bunch of people getting killed. And then Part 2 is going to be, they revert it somehow, and one of the OG Avengers is going to die. I'm thinking it's going to be Tony because A lot he's of people thought that. Cap, but they did you one better. Yeah. I Well, Cap <laughs> dies... In a way, like his time as Captain America dies, so which, I was like, "Half is, halves he's right." Yeah, like like okay, Cap doesn't die, but yeah. he's going to be dead in three days. It, 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 <laughs> you know what was weird? Just going back to Cap real quick, and mm-hmm. that when he was dancing with Peggy, you're like, "Oh, that's so that's so wholesome." Joe mm-hmm. Joe Perra would approve. Yeah, but uh, it, it was just it was such a nice ending. Mm-hmm. But it, I just even though it was so touching and fitting, it just. I couldn't get the juxtaposition away from, but that doesn't make sense at all. Fuck that. <laughs> but okay, back to Iron Man. Uh, let's see. He's where it all began, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big suit and uh, that I, line where yeah. he's talked to John Favreau, the man who started yeah. it all, also uh, is talking to uh, the daughter and saying like, "Yeah, your dad used to like hamburgers." I'm yeah. Like, Fuck this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck this movie right in its stupid oh, face. There, there were, oh, you don't like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, was like, you God, sad. it made me sad. I didn't cry, but I was like, yeah. There, there was definitely some watery eyes in my theater. Same. But I'm like, this is a fucking Iron Man movie, Alex. Yeah, I'm like, hold it together. Yeah. Damn it, man. Put your suit of armor <laughs> yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Pull, pull your shit together, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, perfect. I am Iron Man when he does the snap. Had to be. And I was I was so happy it was him instead of oh look here comes Captain Dusex Machina oh god barf yeah I actually need to uh, what, what was I gonna say uh uh what's the word well, what, amend something I said in the Captain Marvel review what's that uh, I said you know I'm just gonna wait until the end game uh, end game movie because the Russo brothers are gonna do her better in her in a team up movie than in her own solo movie just like Black Panther 
Uh, I was wrong. She's she's kind of useless. In she this. sucks. <laughs> you know, this is like bullshit. Like when Rocket Raccoon gives her a little shit. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you gonna get another haircut? Actually, I'm busy saving planets. <laughs> also, I feel like Rack- Rocket would be like, you know what? Fuck you. When she tries to give it back to him, or he'd like make another joke. He's just like, oh, oh well, oh yeah, I'll, I'll just kiss your ass. Well, yeah, and he kind of relents, like in a weird, like non Rocket way. He's like, right. All right. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck. Yeah, I was whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, her time she's was, fine, but it's it, no. I, just, I mean, it, she felt so her her presence felt so reshooty. See, that's my problem. It's like, really, you, you brought this whole fucking movie in, and nothing from her universe really mattered or carried over. Mm-hmm. All she did was crash Thanos's ship, and it was like great. Uh, that that was quick. She just shows up, does. Not even like a series of punches or like a blast, just like oh, boom, just right through it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's whatever. She's I not mean, her, the best her fight part. with Thanos is pretty sweet though. Yeah, but like it's weird. Like her powers are like when she's powerful, it's not consistent. So like he headbutts her in the face. Yeah, and it's then like, like so she that just doesn't like hurt. oh fuck, so like Thanos is gonna get his shit pushed in. But like no, he just like throws her. Yeah, I'm like wait a second. Like, how does that work? Like, he literally headbutted her in the face, and now he just picks her up. Well, yeah, because, yeah, he threw her before. It's like, ah, and it's like, but now I'm whatever. Yeah, it's a little inconsistent. <laughs> yeah, that, that but, shit happens. You know what? I didn't care because that scene was happening. Yeah. And what scene was that? Oh, that was the... Oh, fuck. Well, hold on. <laughs> Got a couple more tiny bits, and then we'll get to the... The, the main event of the main, main event. The main event of the main event. Uh, Gamora became a turncoat a little too quickly. What happens in the future? Oh, yeah, I try and kill you, but we become b- best buds. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It was like that quick. Yeah. Good enough for me. Speaking of Gamora and Nebula, the other Guardians were barely in this besides Rocket. And you kind of felt it. The yeah. dynamic there, it was like, like having Rocket just on his own, it's like, fine. Yeah. But but it, it was weird because you thought that was the thing, again, with expectations, especially impossible ones, to meet. Oh, I can't wait till so-and-so meets uh, Drax, and mm-hmm. can't wait till Scarlet Witch meets uh, Peter Quill and, like, all this other shit. You know, they, like, still were separate, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I agree. Uh, let's see. Loki's escape. Oh, off to my prequel show. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Go away. No, no, not even that. No, I didn't mean it that way. I said, well, at least you justified it. Sort so of. is he dead? I guess not. But this then is his vision, saying. why is Vision not alive? That's, this is my question. Why isn't Vision not alive? Where, where does it fuck it? Where are the rules apply mm-hmm. i guess with loki he's a trickster okay he's a joke he's a jokester yeah he'll josh you he'll raz you he'll, he'll do he'll, whatever he'll goof you he'll goof you good <laughs> he'll do whatever the fuck he wants apparently yeah, i guess so uh so i don't know it's, i thought that was you know at least he earned it i am um, stan lee's final cameo make love not war love it great stuff yeah uh let's see what else we got um so, Thor joining Guardians. The you, as Guardians of the Galaxy, as you, some people are saying. You bastards. I thought I was out. Mm-hmm. I might. For Guardians 3? I might be back in. Yeah. It'd be interesting. I might be. Yeah, that would definitely sell me on it, for sure. Yeah. See, Spider-Man didn't do shit. No. There's a bunch of people who... Oh, like, the character I or, was going to mention. Sorry, Spider-Man had a moment. The character I was going to mention. Okoye. She's yeah. like on the fucking poster. She's not. She's nowhere. <laughs> she's yeah. nowhere in the fucking movie. All right. You know what? Let's get to. Since we're, we've just mentioned a couple things, we've been dancing around it. The battle. Yes. The battle. Mm-hmm. The comic book movie battle to rule them all. The Helm's Deep. <laughs> the B dash of dash dash yeah. dash word. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. It's just an absolutely glorious moment. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It literally has not gotten this grandiose. No, I got the chills both times I saw this at that scene because I'm just such a fucking sap. I'm like, oh my god. Well, dude, I, I I was thinking on the drive home. I was like, I wonder how Alex felt about fucking Cap getting Mjolnir. Oh, dude. <laughs> 
our fucking audience was like, ah, like I was, howling. I was like, I yeah, mean, that's pretty fucking dope. <laughs> I, I'm not a, a howler at theaters, but goodness me, I, I was you know, smitten, fucking going nuts inside. Oh, Loved man. it. There's one part where he just jumps up real good and he mm-hmm. gets the lightning shot. I just, I don't know why I thought he needed to say Hadouken. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was surprised he wasn't going to do one of those spin kicks. Hot some of music! That was the thing about the whole scene. Is just, it it's just, so, it's, it's callbacks and payoffs of, of so many things you didn't even right. expect. It, it, the, the, the coolest part about that was it mm. made me think the part in Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron, where mm-hmm. he scooches it and Thor's freaking out. Almost worthy. Yeah. And then, like, the on your left thing with Falcon. Yeah. It's like, God damn it. This, oof. But they, they did smart. They delivered. <laughs> they did. This has not yet attempted to be in a comic book movie. Mm-hmm. This is the event comic, but on the screen. How about that collide, by the way? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what's so crazy is it makes every superhero movie that's come out thus far look small in scale. Mm-hmm. Like, even Aquaman. I was yeah. like, Aquaman's huge. Like, there's crabs right. and shit fighting each other. I'm like, even that, I'm like. God damn it! This this collide is some, it's one for the ages because of everybody there. Yeah, th- this is a hell of an X Men collide. Oh fuck it! For is. those of you playing at home, we are of course talking about the uh, opening credit sequence for the 1990s X Men cartoon. Yes, where the X Men and the Brotherhood of Evil are. Yes, but anyway, <laughs> back to this battle. Holy shit! I, I it's like it's hard to describe how great this was because mm-hmm. you know what it was just like Aquaman. What I did when I saw it the second time, because I'm just a, a nitpicky ass nerd, I had to pay real close attention. I'm like, what's going on in the background? Mm-hmm. Everything's super detailed. It's yeah. like their their own each, you know, duel is its own fight scene. There's no slouches mm-hmm. in the animation or or in any of the scenes with the real actors. Mm. I don't, there's a couple people where I'm like, come on now, let mm-hmm. them have a couple more moments. Hulk basically didn't do shit. Yeah, a little and bit. He thought, come on, this is Hulk we're talking about. He should just be wrecking people. You know, <laughs> like, you can do some real creative shit, especially with that many dudes there. No, but he's civilized now. War Machine barely did anything. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. They, they're just. Ah, they, they just threw a little bit of shade at some of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I'm getting you yeah. there. And then Black Widow, as I mentioned, not being there just felt off. Yeah. It's felt sad. real weird. Yeah. You know, oh, oh yeah, you just get to kick a little monster thing like like Peter Quill did, and you get to have a no, I'm killing myself fight with Hawkeye. But other than that, <laughs> pretty you, much, you threaten to throw a sandwich at Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah. But let's go. That the Marvel Trinity. Yeah. So the lead Captain up before Iron reinforcements Man. arrive. That's a great scene. Jesus. Thanos just sitting there. You know what? And this is one of those things where uh, Trent Oplock, is that his name? Mm-hmm. This is where Mr. Oplock earned his keep. It looked so much more cinematic mm-hmm. than any... Really, uh, uh, this is going to sound fucking crazy, but it just looked overly cinematic in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Like, this is as movie as a movie gets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is the scene we've been waiting for. Three heroes in this gross kind of grayish, brownish, literally in the lightning filled a- sky, in the ashes of their own fucking dojo. Right. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So I guess we'll just quickly go over. So they get all the stones, lose Blackwood in the process. They mm-hmm. try and snap. She doesn't come back, but everyone else does. Yeah. And then of course the Trinity walks up to Thanos, and this is their defining moment. Mm-hmm. And then of course. All of a sudden, we see these little zippity doo dah Doctor Strange portals opening, and everyone's there. It's quite a moment. And then all of a sudden, we hear, we all may! Yeah, oh man. Nothing gets me more fucking jacked up than seeing the Wakandan army ready to throw down. It was good seeing them. I wanted a little bit more of Okoye and M'Baku, who I thought would be more focal points in this, but you know what? Whatever, save but, it for Black Panther 2, I guess. But Okoye did get to wreck some of the Black Order. That's true. Which, it was like almost too quick. They just like fucked him up quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, here comes the Black Order. Remember how it took you guys a, you know, good five or six minutes? Stab. Yeah. Dead. Pretty it's, much. It's pretty awesome, though. Mm-hmm. Also, Valkyrie 
that was like the most that w- that might have been one of the most metal things I've ever seen. The Pegasus. Her just riding around the Pegasus, just slicing up those giant things. <laughs> I felt like that scene could could use uh, you, you know, could be rescored or basically just put Thunder Horse behind it. Yeah, <laughs> by, by Metalocalypse. Oh or, yeah, or Death Clock. Sorry. Yeah. You, uh, Pepper Potts was in the Iron Man suit. I actually surprising. I thought like on paper, it was one of those things I'd say sounds stupid, but it was actually cool. Her her uh, design was pretty nifty. Well, I mean, she, she doesn't she wear it in Iron Man three too. Also, yeah, or she gets s- yeah. powers and shit. But then <laughs> Iron Man Pepper Potts have their Beyonce Jay Z moment. Yeah, just fucking up the world together. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Just you know, running shit. True power couple. <laughs> Oh man, there's a lot to talk about. There's there's a lot of asses that get beaten. Thanos is namely Grimace. Right. Grimace finally, finally met his. Yeah, in the form of a snap. well, every, everyone had a part, you know. Mm-hmm. Captain America kept him busy. Mm-hmm. He had his Hadoken. He did, which was fucking great. <laughs> it's it Scarlet was, Witch fucked him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, that I I thought that was pretty nifty. Uh, she's all, you took everything, and he's all, oh, fuck, my bad, brah. Yeah. They, they didn't say that. He's like, we didn't meet before. I don't know who you are. I don't know who any of you are. Yeah, it's like, oh, you mean that Vision guy? Yeah, where the hell is he? I thought he'd be back, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Basically, the, uh, to sum it up, Valkyrie is pretty metal. <laughs> uh, and Hadouken. And Hadouken. For that, and I am Iron Man. And I am Iron Man. Rip Tony. Anyway, holy shit. I just, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that, for me, it's like this movie is... Uh, that was, ex- I mean, that was the one point where I have an expectation. Y'all better fucking meet it. Mm-hmm. They did. I'm very much, a, like, the more and more I go on in watching movies, the more and more I realize that, like, I'm more of a sum of its parts type guy. And for me, this movie is so much more a sum of its parts because... If I'm looking at it parts, it's like, yeah, there are parts that are better than, than others. I have questions. I have plot holes and, and nitpicks here and there. But as a journey, as a ride, the movie is, it's, it's, I don't know if I've seen a movie like this in a while. It's, 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 it's a fucking ride. It's unprecedented. There's mm-hmm. ne- this has never been done in the way that this was done. Mm-hmm. There's never been a culmination like this. Yeah. And. This is one of those things where, do you remember thinking about this when you were younger? Let's say even like 10 or 11. Oh man, wouldn't it be great if we could get a blank movie, uh, you know, Captain America, a Thor, a Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, wouldn't it be great if one of the large scale events happened? You thought, no, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. That'd be the most expensive movie. That's logistically never going to (laughs) happen. This happened. Yeah. This was, it's Infinity War, basically. Yeah. Which is everyone in the Marvel Universe, this is all hands on deck. Yeah. Everyone's there, and they did it. Yeah. And that alone is super impressive. Oh, yeah. I agree. So, I'll, I, I guess I'll just go with a couple, like, tiny things. A couple lines I loved. Hmm. Have, any, have either of you guys studied quantum physics? And then Black Widow just says... Only to make conversation. <laughs> good one. You know, I, I, that's what I'm saying. She had a good sassy line. She did. And yeah, I, she did. You know, and then she just dies. Fuck that. Yeah. Okay, but the battle. <laughs> yeah. The battle. <laughs> uh, Bee Gees or Jerry Mungo? Definitely Jerry Mungo. <laughs> that was uh, the other thing. Is that, like, did you see the community cameos? Yeah. You got uh, Yvette Nicole Brown and Ken Jong in this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's so weird about the Jerry Mungo thing? I, s- I thought y- you're gonna uh, obscurely reference the band who sings in the summertime with the wa da 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 to an audience probably larger than any cinema going audience. Yeah, kudos. <laughs> uh, you, you made a a, a a music fan such as myself happy. Oh yeah, with that line. So yeah, back to wrapping up our review. Nothing like this has ever happened. No. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. This is really unprecedented. Yeah, it's it's a uh, as as uh, epic and as bold and as different and monumental of a send off as I thought, or as I was hoping it would be. I didn't really expect it to be. Yeah. But damn it, is it? Yeah. Oh, real quick though, hmm. one more th- shitty thing to say, and then we'll we'll end it with positive. Mm-hmm. Pass the mantle, like. Can't he just fucking be Falcon? Let him be his own dude. That's another weird... Yeah, is it going to be Captain America and the Winter Soldier or Falcon and the Winter Soldier of the show? Yeah, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what? I'll say this. Maybe he'll just be Falcon with a shield. (laughs) I'll say this. Mantle passing in movies Mm -hmm. makes a little more sense to me. Yeah, it did in Dark Knight Rises. Because movies, I mean, even though this one kind of feels like it, are not written like TV shows, mm. where comic books, they have arcs, but it's like a TV show. It's not supposed to end. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'll just let bygones be bygones. It was handled well, and I loved old, uh, you know, old man Cap. Makeup was great. You gonna, Voice sounded You gonna tell good. me about her? No. <laughs> I don't think I will. That's a great line. I loved it. Yeah. So, the battle and the time, you know... Heist, seeing mm-hmm. all this crazy shit happened. It all ends with Cap dancing with Peggy. Yeah. And I, yeah, fuck it. I'm just blabbering. I have nothing else to say. I've just, I didn't even think it would reach this point. Yeah. It's, you know? it's kind of, it, it's overwhelming in it's, a way. It's so satisfying that they delivered. Yeah. Because how much would that have sucked if this was like horrible? <sighs> It would have been really bad. It would, have been like the, it would have been like the season finale of Lost for so many people, but not me. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, that, that's the thing. <laughs> this truly was, with its interwoven narrative, the most expensive, expansive, uh, intertwined TV series we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And really, it was an amazing experience. I agree. So, let's move on to scores. Yes. Again, I'm a sum of its parts kind of guy. I know there's problems. I know there's nitpicks. But me leaving the theater, the feeling I felt was nothing more than just pure joy and happiness. And I loved this. It's not my favorite Marvel movie, but it's definitely, it's probably in the top five. Uh, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. I'm actually going slightly lower Mm -hmm. because to me, it just, it starts a little too slow. Mm -hmm. And I I couldn't forgive that because I saw this twice to make sure I wasn't crazy. In fact, I think I disliked it even more the first time I saw it, Mm. how slow it was. But I learned to appreciate those scenes a little more, even though I still felt like they were a little too long. Mm -hmm. And plus, uh, to me, I'm I'm sort of a sum of the parts guy, but not really. There's just some glaring issues. Yeah. But at the times where it counted most, they delivered. Mm-hmm. Namely, the battle and the time heist. The ending. And the ending and just the culmination of all these stories coming together. So I know this sounds low, but I had a great time. So I'll give it a four out of five. That's not bad. Which gives us a grand total of... A 13 out of 15. Not too shabby. So that'll do it for our review of... Thor Threatens Children Over Fortnite. 